Hey, welcome to Spec Guide. I'm Max. Apologies, it's high noon, the sun is up, but I am here today to show you how to start, drive, and charge the Hyundai Onyx 6. Let's say you've just rented one of these, you're borrowing a friend's, or congratulations, you've picked one up for yourself. Here's everything you need to know to get started with this futuristic electric sedan. Everything from unlocking it, locking it, figuring out where to store your stuff, where all the compartments are, uh, where to charge your devices, how to actually start it and drive it, use the driving assistance systems, and how to actually charge it when you need more range. So, if you have any of those questions, this is the right video for you. Uh, we have chapters in this video that you can seek around to different sections. If you're curious about just a specific element, uh, look at those labeled chapters in the YouTube player. Anyhow, let's get into it, how to start, drive, and charge the Hyundai Ioniq 6. First things first, for the Ioniq 6, let's get into locking and unlocking. Well, it's fairly basic here. You can see we have a key fob here that, interestingly enough, is like the Hyundai logo when you have it sideways. Cool. It's actually quite light, and I think it feels kind of cheap, but you didn't come to this video for my opinion. You came for how to use the car. So you'll see on the key fob, there's normal-looking unlock and lock buttons, a hold panic button for your horn, of course. Uh, so unlocking the car, you'll notice, of course, it makes a chime. Locking it you'll see the mirrors actually fold in uh, by default and it'll assume a locked position. Now the door handles on this car, especially if you have one of the nice trims, will actually proximity open. I believe it's on SE and above. So you'll get nearby with the key and they should actually just present themselves to you they don't always work though. So sometimes you'll press the unlock button. Another option for keyless access, uh, meaning you have the key nearby, but you don't want to actually press buttons on it. Let's say it's in your pocket. You can just press the pixel on these doors and the handles pop open to you. They work the same on the driver and passenger side uh, once they present themselves. Well, it's pretty obvious. You just open the door like that. You can close it normally. Uh, so you just do that, open them. Uh, and then let's say you walk away from the vehicle, you want to lock it. You press that pixel in the middle, that square, and the vehicle locks again but let's unlock it one more time and i'll show you the cargo compartments before we get into adjusting everything for the driver and climate settings so there's a trunk all ionic sixes have it powered trunk this is a sedan so it's not like a hatch area where it leans into the main compartment it's just this dedicated trunk area uh, and you have pull tabs for your seats. If you do want to fold the seats down, you can use these uh, and get longer loads in. But be aware, again, it's a sedan, so you can't really fit taller things in here. However, nice to have the trunk space. Apologies, high contrast, camera has some lens flare. You'll see a tire mobility kit uh, if it comes with yours or anything else here. And there is an under storage compartment. This is where you'll probably find your mobile charger if your Onyx 6 includes one of those. Um, not much else to store in here in terms of room. You can close the trunk, of course, with these buttons. It's a power trunk on all Ionic 6 models. There also is a very tiny front trunk where you can store small things. You open the hood like you would on any car by releasing the latch in the uh, driver footwell. And then you have the hood here. There should be a latch in the center. If we can find it here, you release that. Open it up. And you can see you have one of the world's smallest front trunks. It's really more of like a cubby area. You could put like folders, documentation, something kind of secret here. It is a lock compartment that's nice, but you can see not particularly weather sealed that has rubber and everything, but it's just such a small area. You're not gonna be able to fit like, you know, huge packages of food, suitcases, anything like that in there. You can of course top up your washer fluid uh, as well in there though, so that's handy. When you get an Ionic 6, uh, by default, everything's off. It's not like a Tesla or a Polestar where it just starts up immediately when you sit in. It has a start and stop button. So to see your battery charge and everything, you may have to put your foot on the brake and press start. And when you do that, it starts the car up and you'll immediately see your battery somewhere in the lower left screen here. You can see it says my battery in percent. So 79% battery. And in case you're wondering how many miles that'll take you, uh, with a guess, you can go on this home screen here where you can swipe between pages, you'll go to the EV section. And in that EV section, uh, you're going to see uh, your distance to, well, the next charger, which is kind of cool. Uh, that is like an emergency feature. It always shows you that, as well as basically your range uh, with climate on, or if you turn climate off, went into more eco mode, what your range would be before you would run out of battery. Keep in mind, it's an 
estimate, not a hard guess. I would go more off the percentage and your driving style uh, to kind of, you know, figure out over time how much range you're actually going to get in this vehicle. You can go into settings here, and this is where you would adjust your charge limits in case that's something you want to do. You don't need to change these, but uh, for those of you who are on the more technical end of things, this is where you do go to do that. You can specify between DC fast chargers and AC chargers, the kind you might use at home, different charging limits. You can even uh, limit the charging current of the car and you can customize other things in here in this menu but i'm going to press back you can go back and at any time we can go back to the home screen okay but let's actually get into adjusting controls for the driver or passenger so you step into the onyx 6 like i showed you with the unlock and lock controls and you'll see on the door cards they're actually quite blank all we have here is the release to get out and our memory seat settings if we have a higher trim you have your Power seat controls on the side here, very normal, right? You can adjust it each way. You have uh, two-way lumbar support as well um, on the driver's seat, so that speaks for itself. The steering wheel is manual adjustment, so if you want to adjust it, uh, you'll just push and uh, pull it, uh, tilt it up and down, telescoping, but it's manual, not power controlled. Interestingly, as we get into the Ionic 6, you'll notice that there are these uh, buttons here, so we go between left or right and we have a directional pad that we can use so the direct directional pad is very handy for basically just moving the mirror up or down we select between left or right this button will fold the mirrors in if you're entering a tight parking spot you'll press it once more to fold the mirrors out manually that's a nice feature uh, you've got your parking brake that you can pull to engage or uh, push to release then you've got uh, brightness controls for your digital gauge cluster and then you've got a uh, option to start vehicle to load, which I'll show you later in this video for power outlets uh, in the car. And then you've got this hold option if you just want to stay in the driver's seat, but uh, open the front trunk, you're picking someone out from the airport, something like that. And a traction control off button. Fairly self-explanatory. Over here, you'll have your window controls. And the window controls are interestingly right on the center because the doors are very bare in this card. So in this car, not card. Uh, so you can you know, use all four of these, very self-explanatory, child lock, unlock and lock button for the vehicle, a toggle for auto hold functionality where your brakes will kind of hold you uh, parked in traffic, very common on vehicles now. Normal cup holders here. This is a nicely specced Ionic 6, so it has a wireless charger, but all of them should have a USB-A port here where you can plug in cables if you want to use smartphone mirroring with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. You will need this rectangular USB-A cable, which is confusing because here you have USB-C cables, but these are for power only. So these are for charging devices. Rear passengers will also have their own USB-C cables, but again, that's only for charging devices, uh, not for actual data. So those vehicle to load ports I showed you, by the way, how to start that on the uh, controls there. There's one here because this is a nicely spec Dynamic 6. Your other vehicle to load port is actually in the charge port on this vehicle. I'll show you that in the charging section of this video where you can plug in Hyundai special adapter and get another 110 volt power outlet that you can power really anything with from the car. Cool. If you have a limited trim Ionic 6, you have a sunroof. Congratulations. You can see mine's open right now. You'll adjust the sunroof here uh, with up and down. You can close the shade. You can also open the sunroof to vent it or just open it up entirely if it's that kind of day uh, and you want a full open experience. Very nice. By the way, uh, when it's not sunny, uh, for all Ionic 6s, your dome lights are controlled here. So controls to turn lights on and off um, are handily uh, up here on this dome light menu. But let's close the sunroof in this limited Ionic 6 because it's a very sunny day and I would like some shade. So we're just gonna close the shade, power sunroof, nice feature if you get the limited trim. But yeah, all your lights are as well here. You also have an option uh, for emergency SOS. Hopefully you don't need it, but that's where that is located. When the car started, uh, climate should be going and the controls for climate are actually very traditional. First of all, we have manual vents here. No touchscreen adjustment. You just move the vents. Of course, they're about uh, four here for the front passengers. Um, so those are your climate vents. And to adjust the temperature, you will just go up and down here, right? Boom, boom, boom. This knob is for volume, not for temperature. You have shortcuts here for the infotainment system, which we'll go over in a second, but let me finish on climate first. So again, you can see your temperature here. You can choose to sync the climate between driver and passenger, uh, as well as many other settings by pressing climate, which is going to bring up this more full menu on screen with more options uh, as well. But there's the main shortcuts you need here. So you have auto. You can choose the fan speed between three levels in auto fan speed. You can use this for manual fan speed adjustment or just turn the fans off entirely. You can use this 
to basically control the uh, directional output, uh, whether you want like, you know, uh, it just brings up the shortcut on screen to toggle between defrosters, forward air, air for the fo footwell, etc. Uh, you have your front defroster, your rear defroster, and you have a recirculation option for uh, hot days where you really want to get the cabin cool very quickly. You can see again fan speed temperature are displayed here. So all pretty self-explanatory. By the way, you need to use the emergency button. It's here quite prominently. Interesting design decision. Now the basics of the infotainment. So these are shortcuts, built-in map system, navigation uh, to enter destinations, media which is going to go to whatever your current media source is, Apple CarPlay, Bluetooth, uh, Sirius XM, what have you, a customizable shortcut button. I press that and you can see it actually brings me up uh, on the first time I press it to a custom navigation option. So I can customize what this actually does. There's a bunch of options here. I don't need to get into that, but just letting you know it's customizable. You can also customize the one on the steering wheel here. In this infotainment system, if you're ever in a screen like this and you don't know how to get home, just press the home icon here and you'll get back to the screen of apps and everything. So get climate zone its own menu. You can press it here or you can use the shortcut here to get to it. But most of the basic climate shortcuts you need are here. If you want to adjust the seats, however, or the heated steering wheel, if your Onyx 6 has those, you have to press this shortcut. And that brings up this option where you're able to control, right, the ventilation or the heating of the seats up for heat, down for ventilation. If your Ionic 6 has that for both, you know, uh, driver and passenger, you can choose to have the steering wheel heat on or off. And again, you have your shortcuts here for your other climate settings. Um, we can go back to front climate and that brings us back to this more full screen menu for our uh you know non-seat and steering wheel related climate controls those are the climate controls uh let's get to know a little bit more of the infotainment system before we actually get to driving the onyx 6. so like i said you go home and you have all these apps if you go over to the left you have this nice minimalist display of a clock your current battery in case you're curious and uh your range uh in miles and then you have uh, your location, temperature, so and a little map. It's a nice display, but it's just kind of a more of a design minimalist display. Scroll over here for your apps, and you've got uh, two pages of apps that you can scroll between um, all of these options. Then on your driver display, here we go. We have kind of a trip monitor. You can customize the view of this by pressing these buttons here. So if I press this page button, you can see it goes between uh, a tire pressure monitor or an info monitor of the car. It goes between kind of a driving display that will show me uh, my power or my regen charge level, my speed and prominent figures. Uh, you have the trip monitor one I showed you earlier and you have a navigation one that by default just shows a compass. But I'm going to go to the trip one because it's a good example to show that you can scroll between some of these using the scroll wheel here in the left side of the steering wheel. You'll just scroll between options and it'll take you between different data pages that you can scroll between. Very nice uh, to confirm OK. If you ever says press OK, like to reset the trip monitor or something, you would just press in on this button to click it. Uh, the Ionic 6 has drive modes. We'll get into this in the driving section of this video, but the toggle between them, you just press this drive mode button. And there's Eco, Normal, and Sport. They really just toggle the sensitivity to the accelerator pedal and the firmness of the electronic power steering. Nothing too crazy in those modes. For media controls here, in addition to the volume knob here in the center console, we, the driver has a volume knob. You have a skip track button, so down to skip track, up to skip uh, back. Uh, re rewind the track. Uh, you have mode to toggle between your sources like Bluetooth, CarPlay, radio, etc. That'll toggle between those. Your voice assistant. So if you hold this with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, that'll trigger uh, your voice assistant on your phone. Your customizable button I showed you earlier. This one it can be customized separately from the one in the center. And a hang up button for voice calls all super useful. These LEDs, by the way, in this nicely specced Ionic 6 are lit up and they will do cool things like light up with your um, parking sensors and all kinds of things. More of a design detail, but I think really cool. By the way, fun Easter egg, this is Morse code for H, which is of course the first letter of Hyundai, four dots. Very kind of sleek and interesting. Before we get driving, your lights are going to be here. I would by default leave them on auto, let the car figure it out. But if you want to turn on parking lights, manual low beams, uh, or turn the lights off entirely, you can. Your high beam controls, of course, work as you would expect. You can flash people and engage them uh, 
by pushing the stock uh, back and forth. Then you have your wiper controls. Uh, I would again leave this on the auto setting, but you can control the interval manually uh, and you can uh, push in to engage washer jets. All of that is possible. Uh, and then we'll get into actually drive selection shortly here. But before we do that, I'm gonna talk about paddles in the driving section of this video. Your paddles are here. So paddle left, paddle right. These control your regenerative braking. So basically you press this paddle more, the car will slow down more when you let off the accelerator. You press this paddle more, the car will uh, coast more and uh, have less of a slowing down effect on the accelerator. Either way, when you press the brake pedal, it blends in regenerative braking, recharging the battery, which is a really cool function of electric cars. This just controls how much of that is automatic when, as soon as you lift your foot off the accelerator without you even having to touch the brake. If you go into the maximum mode, Hyundai calls it the I pedal, you can see it's engaged. It's almost like a one pedal driving mode where you don't really have to use the brakes normally in traffic. You can kind of just uh, anticipate around it. The brakes are always there if you need them, but one pedal is cool. I'll show you how that works in the driving part of this video. Okay, driving the Onyx 6. So once we started it, right, remember it has a start stop button. We need to start it. And before we leave the car, do remember to stop it. Um, Cause if you've driven other electric cars, this habit may be lost on you. I always forget. But if you're used to gas cars, the, that's self-explanatory. But anyhow, the car is started. We're ready to go. We're gonna go and use the PRND selector, which is actually down here. It's this interesting little stock. So foot on the brake, you will pull up for drive one down for neutral, another down for reverse, uh, or two down for reverse, basically. So any any moment, you can go to neutral with one flick down. You can go into park by pressing the side button, and you can go into drive or reverse by just going two in that direction. So for drive, we tilt this forward. Now we're in drive, and we're ready. You can see parking sensors just turned on. And because I am in level three, as they call it, I have a high degree of sensitivity um, of automatically slowing down the car. So basically, I'm just cruising along here, accelerating, and uh, the car will creep forward. But of course, you can adjust this with these paddles I showed you earlier. So if you wanna coast more, you're gonna go and press this paddle, and the car will kind of coast more. You can see I go down all the way to what they call level zero. Uh, on this screen. Level zero, meaning I have the most coasting potential. I'm just cruising along. See again, on this lower left, level two, the car slows down more as I lift off the accelerator. I press minus once more, level three. I press it once more, I'm in the I pedal mode. I pedal on, this basically means I'm in one pedal drive. So one pedal drive is uh, what it sounds like. Most of the time, I only use one pedal. Let's lift my foot off the brake, I'm sorry, off the accelerator and see what happens. I basically slow to a crawl and I am now effectively stopped until I keep going and I'm held here. Uh, I think this will work on hills as well. You can see auto hold engaged, very handy. I'm gonna press the accelerator again and I'll keep going. So again, you can cycle through these modes as you wish. Level zero, one, like the lower levels are more uh, closer to one pedal. I pedal is full one pedal and then level three is kind of like full on coasting. On highways, you may prefer that um, because you may find that's more efficient for you and has the car doing less of the slowing down and speeding up. Around town, you may like one pedal more. That's just been my preference, but you can adjust as you want uh, regularly just using the car and I think that's a really cool feature. Uh, so let me take a left here, and as I do, I'm gonna uh, show you that when you take use turn signals, you can see, don't be alarmed if you see this camera view. This is your blind spot monitor. It's showing you uh, what you're about to turn into if you're making a lane change or something. Very handy, cameras on the mirrors, basically. Uh, super cool feature. Still use your mirrors and your blind spot monitors, but um, it is nice to have that as an extra aid when you're changing lanes. It works both left and right. Uh, the blind spot view monitor is a super unique feature of a Hyundai that I really like. Tesla and Lucid also do it, but I'm not familiar with any other brands that do, which I think is a shame, honestly. As we're cruising along the Onyx 6, well, we're on the highway. Let's say it's time for cruise control. We can turn on cruise control at any moment by pressing this button on the steering wheel. Cruise control is on. You can see it has my set speed. Of course, it's set by default to the speed I was going at when I pressed the button. I can toggle the speed up and down with the switch up and down here. You can see what my hand is doing in the lower left. Uh, and then I can change my following distance by pressing this icon here. 
uh, which is this car following distance. You can see that the graphic next to the speed here is changing as I press that button, toggling between four distance settings closer or farther to the car in front of me. That's the adaptive cruise control feature that automatically right, matches the speed of the car in front of you. Then you have auto steer, toggle that off or on. Right now, I'm gonna toggle it on. You can see steering wheel icon's green, meaning the car is actually gonna actively lane center itself. And uh, as long as I keep my hands on the steering wheel every few seconds, I can't you know, completely go hands-free. It's not a hands-free system. As long as I keep uh, my hands on the steering wheel, it'll just keep centering me in the lane. It'll follow the curves of the road as long as that steering wheel icon's on. I really like this, but you may not like it. You may wanna steer for yourself completely and you don't like the car doing the active lane centering. That's totally fine. You can turn it off just with this steering wheel icon. And now you can see the steering wheel is not lit green. And yeah, there we are. Drive modes, by the way, you press this, I mentioned this, the toggle between sport, eco, and normal. Normal is probably what you want to be in most of the time. Again, all they do is really toggle. Um, a few settings here with accelerator sensitivity and whatnot. Eco would get you a little more range, but it's not going to be a huge amount. Anyhow, that's the basics of cruise control in this car. For if you use your turn signal and you are on a supported highway with having driving assist too, then the car is actually going to do a lane change for you. Very cool. Take your turn signal off. It'll center you back in your lane. So that's a feature on SEL or higher trims. To adjust any of the settings for driver assistance or anything, you'll want to go into the setup app and you will go into the appropriate uh, area for that. So for driver assistance, you go in the vehicle settings and then within vehicle assistance, uh, within vehicle settings, you can see everything you'd want to adjust, all of these features here. Um, so you can change you know, driving convenience, functionality, highway driving assist, whether you want to enable that, lane assist, all of these features are all here. I won't go through them, but this is where you go. You can also search in here. So again, settings, vehicle settings off of the home screen, that's where you go to configure those settings if you want to turn specific features off or on. When it's time to charge your Onyx 6, you feel like you're getting low or you just want to top up, well, you can find uh, built-in navigation options in the EV menu. So I showed you this earlier, right? It's going to show you your default next charger. You don't have to go there. That's just like the closest charger to you that it shows in here. Um, but here you can't schedule charging. So if you're at home, you can actually go and uh, set departure times and departure times can schedule your climate and your charging ahead of time. So if you know you're gonna be leaving home and you have a home charger uh, and you leave the car plugged in, it'll make sure the car charges on a certain schedule to reach a certain battery percentage, like let's say 100% before you leave for a trip and cool the cabin. So you, we could set a departure, we could enable one. So we can go into settings here, uh, basically set the exact time if we want this to repeat and then it will schedule charging and climate uh, as we desire with that but that's where you'd go into that I don't want to get too much into that but that's a nice feature for those of you home users with home chargers but we want to find a charger on the road so what we would do is we'd go here uh, there's the map right uh, and we want to go into navigation so shortcut here is we could press navigation on this icon or from the home screen we could press navigation menu and then we're going to look for nearby points of interest and then we have ev charging stations helpfully it has gas stations here we don't need that for this it's an electric car we're looking for ev charging stations there's several types of ev chargers there's dc fast chargers and there's slower ac charging which you'll often find in areas like movie theaters malls uh, or you know areas where you may be parked for hours at a time and a slower charge is absolutely fine you can filter between the kind of results you want to see nearby by pressing this filter icon and that filter icon will let you select do you want ac dc or really fast dc as they call it dc plus which is above 200 kilowatts uh, those are going to be the chargers that can you know charge you up in like 20 minutes maximizing the really high charge speed potential of this car you can choose which networks you want to enable all of that um, so that's really cool we can go back though and see the menu uh, with our current settings. We have all the AC and DC chargers. And when we find one that we want to actually go to, then we can just go to that charger and set it as the destination in the nav and the car will direct us to that charger. One more advanced thing here, by the way, we're going to have to click start guidance. We can also add waypoint route options. This is just the typical Hyundai navigation. Uh, once we've started or before we've started, actually, if it's winter, I highly recommend you go into setup. You're going to go into EV settings and I recommend you turn on battery conditioning mode. It explains pretty well what it does here, but if you turn it on, 
during low temperatures, namely in winter, it'll turn on the battery heater when you have a destination set as a fast charger. And what this does is it burns a little bit of extra juice getting to the charger, but assuming you're not going to get to the charger with like, you know, almost nothing left to spare, this is nice because it means that battery will be nice and warm, ready to accept the optimal charge rate from that fast charger as you arrive. So in winter in particularly, uh, in particular, I'd leave this checked. The only time I would uncheck it is if you're really trying to stretch your distance uh, to make it to the next charger. But with a car like this, as much range as it has, with, I think, minimal amount of planning, you can avoid that most of the time. So I would kind of leave this on, um, and it only really will turn on in low temperatures when it needs to condition the battery, turn on that heater. I think that's a cool feature, so I would enable that. Okay, let's say you navigated to a charger, you made it, I'm just using my home charger today, but um, let's say it's a public or private charger, it makes no difference, assuming you've accessed it, please back into the parking space because the charge port for this vehicle is on the rear passenger side. So keep that in mind as you park at a DC fast charging stall, especially as you know, parking spaces are limited there. Uh, but if you back in, you get your charge port roughly in the right place. You'll open it up, you'll see, this is how we're going to what's called AC charge just with this pin here. If we want to DC charge, we're going to remove this and that'll give us access to the full CCS port. But today I don't need that. I'm just using this top section because I'm using a slower home charger. So whatever your charging receptacle may be, uh, get, get your charger. You'll activate if it's an Electrify America EVgo charge point station and you don't know how to activate those chargers. We've made videos on this channel describing how exactly you do that. But basically get your charge handle ready and then just plug into the car. And once the charger is activated, you'll hear a click um, on the car and it should be ready to go. And we can make sure the car is charging. Well, a voice just told us charging started, but we can also see on the screen here through the window, if I can see through the tint, uh, it says basically uh, the battery status. I don't think you can see that, so I'm gonna have to open the door, uh, but it does show status of the battery. Here you can see remaining time uh, for the charge, our current charge speed, current battery and all that. So that's how we know it's charging and we can leave it. And of course we can lock away and leave the vehicle while it's charging and that'll lock the charge connector to the car. So that's how to charge the Ionic 6. To stop charging, you can of course uh, hit stop charging on whatever your receptacle is uh, that you're charging from, but you can also do it from the vehicle. So the vehicle has to be unlocked. You can't just jam the charger out while it's locked, but assuming the vehicle is unlocked, we know it is right now because it's presenting the door handles to us. Uh, we can just click on our charger and we should be able to just remove it. The vehicle is gonna know to stop charging and we can press this handy button to close the charge port door. Make sure you remember to do that. Uh, and yeah, now we're all ready to go. All right, that's how to start, drive, and charge the Hyundai Onyx 6. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you still have questions, if you feel like I've left things unresolved or there's something that's missing, please leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer it. And we also have a super helpful community of people, fellow EV nerds here who are here to help out as well. But yeah, that's been a guide for the Onyx 6. Other guides you wanna see, other kinds of content on this channel, let me know as always. I've been Max with that Spec Guide. Be sure to subscribe if you want to stay up to date with EVs and uh, learn how not just the NX6, but all of them work. We're here to help. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.